Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hello, and welcome to the Ident Review Extra, the spin-off show that takes a look at one individual ident each episode and gives it the review it deserves. And this time around, we're embarking on a journey through the rhythm and movement idents that represented BBC One between 2002 and 2006. We let our hair down to enjoy some well-made parodies. The BBC has always been able to poke a little fun at itself throughout the last 100 years, and with its idents, it's always been open to allowing a little humour grace the airwaves from time to time. Whether it's a more jokey turn from a continuity announcer, or the idents themselves being manipulated in some way, parody idents are always a fascinating subgenre in themselves. During the Rhythm and Movement era, several parodies would crop up, some made by the BBC, and some by other channels or entities entirely. Just a heads up, Many of the clips I'm going to present today I'll have to showcase in a chopped up form, otherwise copyright claims will prevent this episode from being seen at all. So apologies if this seems a bit messy, but I hope the gist of the sequences can still come across. With that, let's start with three idents that pay a sort of homage to the Rhythm and Movement set, but these were made by E4. You're watching E4. This is E4. This is E4. Amusingly tongue in cheek, wouldn't you say? E4 is a channel that launched back in 2001, so we're still relatively new and fresh on the scene when these parodies were made, not long after the originals launched on BBC One in 2002. The three different parodies we get are based on capoeira, ballet, and acrobat fittingly three of the earliest idents that debuted as part of the Rhythm and Movement package. They are obvious in what they're representing, but not disrespectful. The capoeira and ballet parodies are super short in length, but they too quickly generate some comedy. In the former's case, we see the martial artists beat each other up, and the one member of the ballet troupe who absolutely kills me off is the one on the floor just bouncing along. It's absolutely daft for sure, but you gotta admit it's funny. It's poking fun at the often controlled, very elegant style that ballet showcases, and it's all for a bit of fun, isn't it? For the Acrobat parody, which is a bit more full length, we see the three drop from the roof as in the original, the material's now purple instead of red. The setting has been altered to more of a dingy warehouse with an open roof, and rather than gracefully showcase a series of moves, we see that the artists are having a little trouble in their execution. All in all, they're daft for sure, but feels typical of the kind of slant E4 was going for in its early years poking fun at something that millions of viewers would be used to seeing every day over on BBC One. But now we move to the BBC themselves, and one of their staples in terms of comedy, the duo known as French and Saunders. Well, these are different, aren't they? By the early 2000s, French and Saunders were already well-established household names amongst the British public. As part of their shows, they paid homage to idents from the Rhythm and Movement set, the ever-popular acrobat, and also hip-hop, with a little bit of the salsa sequence for good measure. The first one sees the two accompany one of the artists from the original ident, only for them to awkwardly drop to the floor, hitting it like a ton of bricks. Unfazed, they quickly get up and head towards the camera, the title for their show appearing also. This is typical of the kind of comedy you would find in French and Saunders, a nice blend of awkward physical comedy with the unassuming looks of the leads, and it works a treat. During the closing credits of an episode, they decide to show their take on the hip-hop ident, or not-so-hip-hop, as it's come to be known. We see them driving around on mobility scooters in a rather uncool way, a complete contrast to the original, and it's interesting that the location used here is the one seen in the salsa ident rather than the basketball court in hip-hop, but I still think it works just fine. 
Overall, the French and Saunders spoofs aren't necessarily the greatest ident parodies ever, but they succeed in combining the charm of their show into the familiar landscape of the rhythm and movement set. Now to another comedy legend, let's see how Peter Kay took on hip-hop under the guise of one of his trademark characters, Brian Potter. You can't help but smile at Peter Kay, can you? Similar to French and Saunders, Peter Kay was a popular comedian, at the time riding high on his television show, Phoenix Nights. For the comic relief telethon of 2003, one of his characters, Brian Potter, would help introduce the night's events. By joining the athletes on the basketball court, he fumbles around, unable to pull off the moves as they do, and responding in typical fashion. It's quite simple again, but for me the dialogue works a treat. Peter Kay's delivery always manages to get a chuckle out of me. The second variant I find even funnier, where poor Potter once again tries to copy those surrounding him, only to topple out of his chair entirely. Physical comedy executed wonderfully, and my only criticism would be to say that it's a shame that more spoofs of other idents from this era weren't commissioned. There are a few more parody sequences from this era, but unfortunately I wasn't able to find video for all of them. In the comedy radio and television program, Dead Ringers, one episode showcased John Culshaw as the then Prime Minister Tony Blair performing a dance outside of 10 Downing Street, as if it were a BBC One ident. This was seen in an episode that aired in the summer of 2003 over on BBC Two. Meanwhile, over at the recently launched BBC Three, parodies would be seen on the adult comedy animation series Monkey Dust. I could only find one short clip, but unfortunately, I'm not going to risk showing it to you here. If you have a browse, you'll know what I mean, as many of Monkey Dust parodies contained elements that aren't necessarily suitable for younger audiences. But then again, you could argue that BBC Three in its early days as a whole wasn't suitable for younger audiences. Whether you love them or hate them, I believe parodies are always a fun and interesting side note in a channel's history. Being able to open up and poke fun at yourself, or to let others do so, often yields great results, without necessarily being hurtful or disrespectful. Whether it's French and Saunders, Peter Kay, or even rival channels like E4, these parodies, if anything, are a testament to the originals from the Rhythm and Movement set, showing that because the originals offered something interesting and inspiring, these parodies, in a roundabout way, pay homage to that individuality and often can be pretty amusing and memorable in their own unique way. And so that brings us to the end of another episode of the Ident Review Extra. If you enjoyed this look back at the parodies of this era, then please leave a like, comment your thoughts below, and subscribe to the channel for lots more Ident related content. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show, and a special thank you to Macra, Hooks Media, Ben Freeman, Ethan Carberry Holt, Bruce Danton, The Broken Kitsumanoid, and Francine Salazar, our AMTV staff members.